Section 6.4 Applications of Linear Systems I can choose the best met method for solving a system of linear equations. Big ideas here. Systems of equations can be solved by graphing, substitution, or eliminating a variable. The best method to use depends on the forms of the given equations and how precise the solution should be. If we look at the take note on page 387, uh, here it says, are different methods that we used, graphing, substitution, and elimination, and uh, sometimes when it's going to be helpful to use them. Keep in mind we can use any of these methods any of the time, uh, but sometimes we're not going to get the answers we're looking for as far as precision uh, goes like as with graphing. Uh, sometimes our answers might not be precise enough, and sometimes it's going to be harder to use substitution or elimination. So, um, here it tells us for graphing, we want to use that when it's a visual display of the equations or when we want to estimate. Okay, if we're looking for just a general idea, we can use graphing. Substitution uh, is when one equation is already solved for one of the variables or when it's easy to solve for one of the variables. And elimination is when the coefficients of one are the same or opposites or when there's not really a convenient way to use the other two. Uh, systems of equations are useful for modeling problems involving mixtures, rates, and break-even points. Uh, the bottom of page 387 has a picture of a break-even point here. A uh, break-even point for a business is the point when income equals expenses. So they're not making money, but they're not losing money. The amount of money they bring in is the, the exact same amount of money as the money they take out. Um, and the graph there on the bottom shows that. So income and expenses happen to be the same at that point. Okay. In example one, we are going to find a break-even point. A fashion designer makes and sells hats. The material for each hat costs $5.50. The hats sell for $12.50 each. The designer spends $1,400 on advertising. How many hats must the designer sell to break even? So again, with break even, we're talking about our money. Um, so here, I'm going to have two variables. X is going to be the number of hats, and Y is the money amount for either income or expenses. So I'm talking about two things here. I'm talking about money, and I'm talking about number of hats. Okay. So for break even, we need income and expenses to be the same. So my first equation, let's go with income. Uh, the amount of money that we bring in, if we look at our prices here, materials cost 550. Okay, that's a cost, that's an expense. They sell for 1250 each. That's income. And they spend $1,400 on advertising, that's an expense. So our income, we only have one here. The each hat sells for $12.50. So it's going to be $12.50 times the number of hats X. And this is our income. Our expenses, or our total amount of money for expenses, are all of our expenses. Here we have hats cost uh, $5.50 to make. So $5.50 so $5 times the number of hats, which is our X. And they also spend $1,400 on advertising. Okay, uh, that's just a fee. It's not per hat. It's just an overall fee, whether they sell one hat, zero hats, or 700. Okay, now I have my system. If I look here, elimination uh, would be a little bit tricky. My variables are on different sides. We could make it work, but substitution is going to be the way that I'm going to use because we already know some things here. Uh, we know what y equals. I know that y equals 550x plus 1400. So I'm going to substitute that in for y. Now, instead of writing y, I'm going to write 550x plus 1400 and the rest of my equation is going to stay exactly the way that it was. Now I'm going to try and solve for x here. 
Uh, in order to do that, since I have variables on both sides, I'm going to move from one side to the other. To get all of my x's away from the left side to the right, I get rid of them by subtracting. Right now I have a positive 5.5, so I subtract to move that whole term to the other side, x's and all. Now to get rid of my multiplication, I divide. And now my x is the only thing left on the right side. And I get 200 hats. X is 200. And here, uh, since X is the number of hats and it's asking me how many hats, that's all I need to do. If they wanted to know what the break even point was, I would plug that in for X, and it, my Y value should be the same in both equations. Now, a puzzle expert wrote a new Sudoku book. His initial costs are $864. Binding and packaging each book costs 80 cents. The price of the book is $2. How many copies must be sold to break even? So again, we're talking about breaking even, so I need variables. First of all, I'm going to use x for the number of books. And I'm going to use y again for my cost, um, so my money here, my amount of money for income and expenses or costs. We just use expenses usually when we're talking uh, money like this. So income is the amount of money br we bring in, expenses are the amount of money we spend. Uh, if we look at all of our things here, it says initial costs are 864. That is an expense. Binding and packaging each book costs 80 cents and that's each. So this is per each and it's an expense. The price of the book is $2. And since that's our price, that's gonna be the income. That's how much money our puzzle expert makes off each book. So, uh, the amount of our income, Y, is going to be $2, that's our only income, times the number of books. Sorry, uh, books are X. Our, num our expenses, we have initial cost of $864, and that's not per book, uh, that's just how much it costs initially. Not per book, okay, so we don't multiply it by x, it's just a value. Plus, we have 80 cents each book for binding and packaging, so 0 .80, and since that is each or per book, we times it by the number of books. Again, we can make our system here. I know what y is. So I can substitute that in for y. Since it's easy to solve for variables here, we already have two equations solved for y. We can use substitution fairly easily. 864 plus 0 0.80x, and the rest of my equation stays exactly the same, equals 2x. Again, we get all of our variables together on one side, so I want to completely get rid of the x's on the left, and I do that by subtracting because now I get 0. 864 equals 1.20x, or 1.2x. To get rid of the multiplication, I'm going to divide. Here, I get 720 for x. x is the number of books, so 720 books. And it says how many copies, and we're talking 720 copies. Again, if they wanted to know what is the break-even point, what's the dollar amount, we would plug our books in times 2 and get 1,440. Here in example 2, it says the local zoo is filling two watering tanks for the elephant exhibit. One water tank contains 50 gallons of water and is filled at a constant rate of 10 gallons per hour. The second water tank contains 29 gallons of water and is filled at a constant rate of 3 gallons per hour. When will the two tanks have the same amount of water? Here we have two things we're comparing. X is going to be uh, my number of hours that the tank is filling. And y is going to be the number of gallons in the tank. 
and you can make those however you can swip, uh, switch them swap them you can use H and G whatever you want to do okay so I have two tanks so for tank one and tank two in tank one the amount of gallons I have is 50 gallons to start with and it's being filled which means it's increasing at 10 per hour so 10 times the number of hours in tank 2 I start off with 29 so the amount of gallons is 29 and is filled again so I'm adding at a constant rate of 3 gallons per hour so 3 gallons times the number of hours this is my system so I can put these together y equals sorry 50 plus 10 X and y equals 29 plus 3 X now I know what y equals y equals 29 plus 3 X so I can substitute that into my equation and solve again the rest of my equation stays exactly the same We want to get all of our variables together on one side, so I'm going to move my variables from the left side. Completely move them by picking them up and doing the opposite. So subtract 3x. Now since all my variables are on the left, I need to get rid of the 50 to get all my number parts, constants, on the other side. And to get x by itself, we're going to divide and I get x equals negative 3 hours. So when will these two have the same amount of water? Negative 3 hours. Check, does that answer make sense? No, we can't have negative amounts of hours, so this is never going to happen. Okay, and I know some of you are saying, well, eventually it'll just keep overflowing and they'll both be completely full, uh, but that's not what we're looking for here, guys. We're looking for when at the same time will they be the same rate? So when will the same amount of water have been pumped into these tanks? And that's never gonna happen uh, because the tank one will always have pumped more water into the tank. Uh, even if it, they're both the same size and overflowing, uh, it's still never gonna be the same. And I'm gonna stop this one here so I can make sure to fit that whole next example in and start the second part.